I am Rianti Jalante, uh, Assistant Director slash Head of Division of Disaster Management and Humanitarian Assistance of the ASEAN Secretariat. Women are half of the population and we know globally there continue to be significantly more men than women at the more senior level of humanitarian leadership. At uh, my 10 years working on the field and working with women leaders at all levels, from community to regional level, international level, I have seen how having diverse leadership in DRR can reduce vulnerability to disasters and climate change. They are critical actors in effectively managing risks and in designing and implementing programs that build the resilience of all of their communities. Having women as leaders for disaster risk assessment team, for example, can draw out different voices that highlight different dimensions of disaster risk and adaptive capacity. At the community level, doing risk assessment, time is very important to be able to get the perspective of uh, women. We need to do it at the time while they are working at home or even, you know, uh, returning from work in the afternoon. So this issue is very important. Moreover, at the national, regional level, women leaders are effective in fostering cooperation across sectors to reduce risk, you know, often bringing sectors such as social welfare, health into critical uh, disaster risk agenda. One of the examples for this is the ASEAN uh, establishment of the technical working group on protection, gender, and inclusion, which bring uh, not only ACDM, but the health sectors and social development sectors. I started my journey in disaster management and disaster risk reduction following the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami. At that time, I was working for the local government uh, in Indonesia. A lot of local government members died in Aceh, the region uh, most affected. So at that time, I asked myself, you know, what if that happens in other regions in Indonesia? How would local leaders or including women uh, leaders help to reduce districts? And this is where I realized that we need greater involvement of women leaders uh, in disaster risk reduction. Also from this uh, 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami, we, we know that a lot more uh, women and girls died from the disasters. So then this must need to be something to understand this one here. Also, I have involved in the research on disaster risk reduction. I want to make sure that gender uh, consideration on the impacts of disasters are known, but also on the potential active role of women and girls to contribute to disaster risk management. One small thing that I made sure during my time uh, during research is quoting female authors within my academic journal that I write. So now, uh, even in, in my current role as practitioners working for ASEAN secretariats, we want to ensure that female leaders from uh, different uh, member states and DMOs are contributing actively uh, in the room, their, their roles are being recognized, and also ensuring that female uh, officers that are working on the way up you know, are being recognized and being part of the conversation. Of course, there are still a lot of barriers for women leadership in DRR, but we also see a lot of opportunities. Society needs to ensure that women uh, take that opportunities, deal with the barriers, but also work with the opportunities. So although we have seen a stronger representation of women in management and leadership in recent years, many women are still working against the rigid gender norms. They may not see themselves as leaders, and it makes it harder for them to reach higher leadership position. Often in search a rescue or response side of disaster management, male roles are more visible uh, and they are also risk, uh, perceived as a men's job, even if there are qualitative women working in this role. Moreover, we see the need for targeted strategies to support and retain women in workplace. For example, providing dedicated mentorship, leadership training, career development opportunities, and of course, at the time of COVID, we know that women, while still working at home, also contributed to a, a lot more household work. So even understandings of the offices, of the systems, that the need of working from home uh, may differ between male and, and women staff. 
So operationally, we also see how disaster management careers are not always built to accommodate care responsibility in the household. And we see this a lot during COVID-19 time. Uh, it's often harder for women to leave children, you know, elderly parents that they have to care for. Extended mission, emergency responses is uh, uh, something that not only have to be dealt with, but also, you know, we need to ensure uh, that uh, all these uh, household needs uh, are get taken care of. First of all, I would like to highlight the need for paradigm shift from seeing women as victims of disasters to uh, see them as active agents of change and as leaders. At the regional level, it's, uh, we, uh, there's an excellent platform to share what works for women leadership. So last year, ASEAN Secretariat with UN Women, UNDRR, and IFRC organized a roundtable that showcased the enablers for leadership for women, youth, person disability with disabilities in disaster management. So, uh, I want to underscore the importance of high-level political will, commitment, and recognition of women leadership and the critical role it plays. For example, the COVID-19 pandemic has catalyzed this commitment uh, in many ways. We have ASEAN Women's Leaders Summit in 2020. So, during this time, the leaders committed to place women's leadership and contribution at the heart of COVID-19 recovery also highlighting significant roles in building a more cohesive, dynamic, sustainable, and inclusive ASEAN. Secondly, uh, uh, advocate for adopting targets in DRR related to women's leadership and not that for ASEAN, for example, in its regional framework on protection, gender, and inclusion in disaster management. Uh, the framework adopts a target action on institutionalizing leadership of women children, youth, elderly, the poor, people with disability, in disaster preparedness, response and recovery, and promote their full and equal participation in decision making. So thirdly, on the note of monitoring progress against such targets and putting in place a dedicated strategies to accelerate progress towards their achievement. And finally, I would like to highlight the importance of establishing accessible opportunities and pathway for young women in DRR for career development, skill buildings, and mentorship.